Joey Merlino put a hit out on me. He used to tell everybody he was a, a big uh, movie director, and he would ask for your paperwork, like, I'm going to make a movie when you get out, and, and set you up and tell on you. When Joey said all of that, I feel like he put a target on my back. I told the truth. What I said was true. In the six minutes or seven minutes that we spoke, or, oh, it was, it was a while. Now, keep in mind, 95% of the conversation was just him screaming. I mean, that's what he's doing. He's running down the street like, ah. I mean, it was insanity, bro. It was insane. And it so once again, you made the right call by not posting the video <laughs> of, of us, which honestly, you know, me or discussing uh, Joey Merlino. So, Correct. You know, we had a discussion. I didn't, you know, what's so funny about it is like, I don't even feel like I was out of line. I thought I was, I was just being honest. I but, may insulted him a little bit, a little bit. I, okay. Sorry. I, I couldn't help but to use that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> insulted nah, him a little bit. Nah. So, um, yeah, but I mean, like I was, you know, I felt like I was being honest like that, that you know, it, it, and what people were most upset about <clears throat> was that I said, that I sat at the same table with him, which, you know, and I felt like I was pretty clear. I sat at lunch or might've been dinner, lunch or dinner with Merlino and a couple other guys. Merlino did not know that I cooperated and guys were like, you would have never stopped, bro. I was with a guy that Merlino knows. Mm -hmm. And so Merlino waved us over. And I was actually going to go sit somewhere else. And the guy goes, nah, he goes, you're, you're good. Come on, come with me. So I go over there and I sit down. I didn't say two words to him. I just ate, but I just listened to him complain the whole fucking time. And I remember thinking, God, this guy's miserable. Like, you know, and then of course, everybody always says, of course he's miserable. This is, these are the comments I get as a result of this whole thing. I'm just going off of the comments. Of course he's miserable. He, he's, uh, surrounded by rats, uh, and chomos, right? Your hero Merlino was at a prison with rats and, and, and chomos doesn't say much for him, but, and I got a bunch of other guys that would say, say stuff to me about me in the comments. Like you're a rat. You were, you were in a protective custody low. It wasn't a protective custody low, but let's assume it was a protective custody low. Merlino was in the low. Now I'm not saying he needed to be in protective custody, but obviously it wasn't a protective custody low. Not listen, almost every low, not almost every late, that's wrong. Every single low in the federal system is filled with people that cooperated and, um, you know, and chose. So it's filled with those mixed in with those guys are people, high profile guys. um, you know, and then other guys that maybe they, they, you know, went to trial or they're perfectly, you know, they get mixed in there, but they're low. They're, they're like nonviolent guys. They're close to home and they put them there because most people at a low don't want any trouble. So why does it, why is that though? Why do they mix them in with those? Like, I mean, I, Joey's never been convicted. Well, I think the armored car robbery, but I don't know if that would classify him as like a violent guy. I mean, so what, what would make him land in that prison? I don't, I don't know. Well, I think what one, I think is probably the, because he, obviously he, he's, you know, he's never cooperated. That's, you know, that's a given, you know? Yeah. So I would say it, it, he was there specifically because he was high profile and you know, that's pro and it was probably a safe prison to put him at, right? Okay. Like he probably doesn't know too many people, although there were a bunch of mobsters there, you know, but they're, they were typically in their, in their sixties. And Merlino at this point was in his mid fifties, early, early to mid fifties when I was there. And, um, the other guys, these guys were probably in their sixties, early sixties. Some of them were probably maybe even in their seventies. So I, I, I don't, you know, I think it was probably high profile and that's why they put him there. Right. You know, they probably don't it wasn't to, uh, like at that time they were beefing with New York or anything. Well, that's not like they, had anything like the along those lines to worry about? At least not nothing that made uh, you know, the press. I don't know what yeah. went on behind closed doors. No, there, you know, all the all the other mobsters that were there were were all New York guys. But you know, and what would happen? What was funny about that is these guys. I want to say it was every might have been every Sunday or something. They would get together in one of the units, 
and have like a meal, right? You know, Merlina was never invited to those meals. Like they were polite to him, but the consensus was that this guy was a young hothead who didn't want to wait his turn and basically took out hits on people and forced his way, you know, to become the, honestly, from my, my understanding is the, the kind of unofficial, you know, leader of the Philadelphia mob, because like, was he ever, was there ever a, a vote? Would did they ever put him in there? Or did he just basically seize control and really seize control? But even then, for the majority of the time that he was, you know, in, you know, that life, he was incarcerated. There wasn't a, 20 years or 15 years or 10 years that he was out running things. Um, well, and I think too, like to your point on that, he, he kind of, at some point, I think any mob boss or a boss of a family does have to seize control. Um, it's still like New York yeah. is a little yeah, different because they have to, it goes to a commission. So like, just say for instance, when Paul Castellano got taken out, Gotti was the favorite to be boss, but it still had to be okay by the other families. I'm not sure of how that would work in Philly, but I mean, if somebody's there, if they're poised to do it, it's just easier to say, yeah, that's, you know, you do it. And I'm not saying that's how it happened, but you know, when, when Nikki Scarfo finally got arrested, there was the war between him and Stanford, then Ralph and Tally, then, you know, it just kind of, he strategically kind of, slid in there and i think he was he was respected i mean you know i don't think there was anybody really at that time to challenge him for it in my opinion anyway right um yeah i i think that probably that's probably what you know obviously ha probably what happened was obviously i don't, I don't know, if I know about him taking too many hits out on people i mean i know it's it's alleged that he did try to kill nikki scarfo's uh son um, right. It was never proven, but it's, you know, that's the rumor. Um, a lot of it was really just, you know, a lot of war between them. I don't know that he took out like a boss to get Basically, everybody got arrested and he just moved up. Right. So I think I, I do know that. I mean, I was and I only know this from something that somebody contacted me and told me that, you know, and sent me an article where this guy's brother was murdered. And Merlino was supposedly the guy that they looked at for the murder, oh, okay. but he was never found guilty. Um, you know, whether he did it himself or took a hit out or, you know, the guy has certain theories, but like I said, there were, and there's articles about it, you know, there's the, about the murder mm -hmm. and um, Merlino's name is mentioned, but you know, he was, he's never been indicted. So I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't know enough about it other than what the article said. And you know, I don't want to get into it, but I, I think that, you know, guys in that position do tend to say, hey, that guy's got to go. But, yeah. you know, or sometimes maybe people just know that you're having an issue with that person and they take it upon themselves to take care of it. I don't know. That's kind of why we're here today. huh? <laughs> so exactly. So listen, I got a ton, a ton of backlash in the comment section. Oh, yeah. And, and I don't even know, you know, I don't even know how I can really even say backlash. Like, I mean, is backlash, you know, you know, in, in the comment section, like, it's not like it keeps me up at night. T typically when people are yelling at me and, you know, saying horrible things and, and, you know, a lot of honest things, um, you know, and saying things, you know, about me, it, it always kills me. Like, you know, like, you lying rat. No, no, I told the truth rat, maybe, but I'm honest. The guy who was lying <laughs> was the guy that was lying to the authorities, you know? So, you know, what, what ends up happening is you get all these people or I got all these people that are just smashing me. Like I've never had so much hate in a fucking video in my life. Oh, it, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, I you got, got somebody slapped on you. Yeah. I was about to say, he's like just two rats talking. I'm like, you know, not that I have anything against you for doing what you did, but like, I didn't rat. I was never in involved in anything like that. I don't even know anything to tell anybody. Yeah. But somebody even said that in one of the videos about my story is like, if he's, if he only done, or if he only got that, he must've talked. I'm like, talked on what? On who? Like what? what they, listen, they say all kinds, I, you know how I many, how many of these guys are saying, w would say stuff like, um, you, you know, they, they would, they would say stuff like, oh, uh, 
Cox rat Cox sent, you know, people to prison for thousands of years or, you know, just so he could get out of a few years. It's like, first of all, I got out of 12 years. Secondly, I didn't send anybody to prison. One guy got an extra six months on his sentence. One, and he didn't even do that six months, by the way, because COVID hit. He just got, they let him out of jail like 10 years early. So I didn't give anybody any extra time. And, but, but the person that I did cooperate against, guess what? He was robbing old people. He was stealing people's pension fund. And what always kills me is like, if your mother had lost $3 million in a Ponzi scheme, and I could tell you where the money was buried, you'd be begging me to cooperate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, but they, you know, it's so, it, it's such so simple and so easy to just say, oh, you, you're a rat. My favorite is, do, don't, don't do the crime unless you could do the time. Like, shut up, bro. Just go back to your fucking, your job at fucking Walmart. And it, stop, stop acting like you're a gangster. I know it sounds good. It's cute. It's a cute saying. I love it. But um, so here's what happened. Typically, these guys say horrible things. And I don't think anything of it. No big deal. But Merlino then, um, then comments on the vi- about the video. He comments about you and I talking right like um i know he i don't know if he referenced me i know he referenced you no no being in prison <laughs> but i mean i think it was the it was the video we were on oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. um so he, i'm not greenlit as far as i know no no he ends up saying um and you know it'd be great if colby cut in the part where he says it right here yeah you know, i'll have to grab that and have him say where he's like what does he call I, I i forget what he says he calls me um you know he calls me something um Oh yeah, uh, 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 look, look at him. He looks like a fucking girl. I never sat with that motherfucker. Uh, uh, what, what does he say? He says something about um, he probably got raped in prison. You know, which honestly is not funny. Like, <laughs> I mean, no offense, people get raped in prison. Not at Coleman. <laughs> you know, not at the not at the low. But you know, it uh, it does happen. They got this other jerk of I don't even know who he is. He said he was in Coleman with me. And and, uh, some fucking Matthew but, Cox. Yeah, some yeah. fucking yeah. Oh, my son. Yeah. What is? He looks like a fucking girl. He probably got raped in there. <laughs> yeah. You know what he used to do? He used to tell everybody he was a, a big uh, movie director. So, you know, I don't know why that, why anybody would find that funny. But you do look strikingly different from that mugshot that he shows to now. Like, I don't, I don't, I can't even picture you looking like I that. I don't even under, understand why he said I look like a woman. I mean, women are attractive. You think he's attracted to me? He did uh, do a lot of time. I, uh, whoa. <laughs> I'm just saying, it was an odd thing to say. Regardless. Uh, I'm, I'm back now. Okay. So, so regardless, I'm just fucking with you, Joey, bro. I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. It's not a big relax. It's all fun and games. If you're going to be on YouTube, you're going to have a, have to have a thick skin. Ah, uh, yes, yes, you do. It comes with some, right. Some hands. And that's what all these guys that are like, you know, oh, he's still running the, the Philadelphia mop. Stop it, bro. He's not running, running anything. He's retired. He's not fucking with any of that. He's, he's probably thrilled. He didn't have to spend the rest of his life in prison. Yeah. I mean, to, to be somebody that was the status that he was, um, and let's be honest in that world, 13 years, I think total is not a ton of time. It's more than I think the average person wants to do, but to be at the status that he was involved in everything that he was, that's pretty good. And to now seemingly kind of step away from it all and, and, right. and not have to be, on it. yeah. Yeah. And, and be able to, where's he in Palm beach or, or. Uh, Boca okay. Raton and back and forth from there to, to Philly. And I mean, he seems know. like he's living a pretty good life. How he's, how he's funding it. I can't imagine. Um, just at the Super Bowl the other weekend, those tickets don't, uh, come very cheap. You can't find them on Craigslist. Uh, so, all right. So what ends up happening is he ends up saying one, he says, I'm lying that I was never sat at the table with, which I did. And that's fine. You know, you, you can say that I understand for his, to look like the cool guy in front of all of his, you know, his fans, then he doesn't want to admit that he sat at a table. But the truth is, I never said he knew. He didn't know. But I did sit at the table with him multiple times. So how big of a table are we talking? Because when you say this, I'm thinking Shawshank Redemption big table. Oh, no, no. Four, like four people. Okay. Those tables sit four people. Okay. You know, they're um, made of, uh, what is that? Is there Formica? You know, the beat to hell Formica tables with the the chairs are welded on Damn. you know 
They're welded on little chairs that swivel a little, just a little swivel in them. They got a little plastic, you know, it's plastic back and butt and you sit down and you know, you eat your food, you know, never had a conversation with them. I, I never said we were buddies. So, you know, sat with him, I think once that one time, and then I'd say maybe twice. And then a couple of times we were sitting down eating and he came over and sat because he thinks I'm okay. Yeah. So, you know, never said he knowingly sat with, you know, sat with me knowing I cooperated. So you two never really had a, what you would consider a full blown conversation. Hey, how you doing? Where you been? Where you from? I think the most I did was, you know, I was introduced. He nodded to me. I nodded back and I just started eating. You know, I was disinterested. I'm not interested in hanging out with this guy. I'm not or really anybody. Like, honestly, I'm not super friendly. I mean, I'm polite. I'm very polite, but I'm not going out of my way to be, to make friends or anything. I, I have my own little routine. That's it. But here's what happens. Once Merlino comes out and he says, oh, I never sat with this guy. Then he says, I, I called, you know, he called somebody to see who I was. So he immediately made one phone call to a guy that we both know, which is odd since you don't know me. You call the one person we both know. And then that guy says, oh, here's who this guy is. And of course, he gets that wrong, too. He says that I'm walking around saying I was a producer. I never said I was a producer. Anyway, I was writing true crime stories for about five or five to seven years. Well, wait a minute. No, that's not true. It was probably about nine, eight or nine years. I, I wrote true crime stories. Everybody knew who I was. They knew what I had done. They knew, you know, I'm a, I'm an infamous con man. Nobody thinks I was a producer. That's not a thing, you know? So had that, the that, American greed aired at this time. Oh, American greed had, had already aired. It aired in 2009. Okay, so the, you're, it's pretty well known who you are, what you're in there for. Everybody knows. And, and I've gotten guys in Rolling Stone magazine and, and, you know, different articles. And so, you know, I've got books that are published. Guys are walking around with my books. So, like, nobody thinks I'm a producer. I've never said I was a producer. I wouldn't even know how to pull that off. I don't even know what, I'm mean, positive what a producer does. I'm about to say, if you're a producer, you should have your own movie out. But uh, I can say that. <laughs> Thank you. That hurt. So, Anyway, so then he says, oh, this guy was pretending to do this, pretending to do that, uh, th so he could go tell on people, and that's not what happened. I've never told on one person that I ever wrote an article on or never cooperated against anybody I ever wrote a story on, never. So none of that's true, but, you know, that's just what they do. They, they run their mouth. So people run their mouths about stuff they don't know. I mean, that's just inmates in general. But here's where it gets interesting. Because he says all of that stuff, he gets his his little fan base. I shouldn't say little bit. He gets his fan base. There's probably not a little bit. It seems like a big fan base, actually. So he gets his fan base pumped up and they come, they attack me, right? They start leaving messages. They start, I end up, and a lot of them are filled with hate, right? And I've had people say stuff before in the comment section, right? You know, you're a piece of garbage. You should be, uh, you should be killed. Somebody should kill you, you know? That very few and far in between. I typically only get the, um, oh, you're a rat, you know, that kind of stuff. I typically only get those kinds of things, like as if that's going to hurt my, you know, hurt my feelings. So, but then I got hit up by on Instagram by a guy named Logan. Now, I don't think that's really his name. He's definitely not a Logan. He's obviously a Tony or an Anthony or a Joey. Um, and Logan left me a message message says open your veins is that by the way horrible grammar clearly I, i'm gonna say he's from philadelphia uh might be new york and I, i'll explain why i think this uh so he said no punctuation i mean really the the education system in this country so it says open your veins in your bathtub pussy fucking rat <laughs> your father despises you my father's deceased um, and hopes you, you raise the rate yourself burn for eternity with your fucking dirty ass grandma, fucking Mick pussy. I'm Norwegian by the way, not, and I told him this by the way. So anyway, then he comes back and he writes this over and over again. You can see if you can see where he says, raise the rate, raise the rate. So he says, what, what is that? What is raise? Well, the I rate? found that out. This is what's interesting. I, he says, raise the rate. Raise the fucking, the rate, fucking rat. Raise the rate, raise the rate. And he says it over there, raise the rate, raise the rate, raise the rate. And then he, he included, it, it keeps going, raise the rate, raise the rate. And then he included a statistic, like my a, a, screen, a screenshot that he, he um, left, which I thought was interesting. 
It's the suicide rate. So, ah, that okay. That makes yeah, sense. suicide rate 2021 was 14.04 per 100,000 individuals. I'm not even positive what that means, but whatever. So he's saying slit your wrists and raise the rate of suicides. Now, and then it keeps going, raise the rate, raise the raise the rate, fucking rat. Um raise the rate, raise the fuck, keeps going, going. Then he calls me, uh, Fanuccio. Fanuc. Fanuc. Oh, but then he said, uh, I'll fuck your wife till she smiles and send your faggot ass a video. Oh, so he's going to record himself. Okay. Uh, man, I don't think this gentleman cares for you. It's, uh... <laughs> Honestly, I've had worse. I mean, I've, I've, Damn, really? I, yeah. I had a guy that used to write me letters when I was in, when I was locked up, I had a guy one time after American greed, uh, aired, he wrote me this nasty letter that said that I had to like, I did the first, he said it, the letter said it was from a law firm, but it was a law firm that was in a movie with Chevy chase, right? It was whatever he had some law firm and it was, that was the name of the law firm. So the guy then came back and said, it was a, did you ever see, um, was it Fletch? Fletch. Yeah. I've seen it. I can't remember what the law firm was, but I've seen right. It. So he, there's a law firm there and he uses the law firm. So then the guy goes on to tell me what a piece of garbage I am. No, what he didn't start first. He starts by saying he's going to, he's representing me. He's hired. This law firm has been hired to represent me. And I'm, and I'm looking at it and it's like, what is this? Like, it's, it's just, and it was by the same thing, horrible grammar. So the it's, the, they're going to represent me and it goes on and on. They've already spoken with the judge. They've spoken with the district attorney. There are no district attorneys in the federal system. It's, uh, they're, uh, they're U S attorneys or assistant U S attorneys. So he goes on and says, he spoke with the judge and they, they've got my, my release is pending and they're going to have me released. Okay. So he goes on and on and on. Then he talks about how horrible it must be for me to be in there, to have to uh, do everything that I'm told to do, that I have to eat the food that probably has semen and toenails in it. Um, I mean, he goes on and on. Then he, then he starts telling me that I look like a monkey. Um, and he's, and I, I will never forget what he sees said, but I wouldn't be too upset about that. He's lots of people look like monkeys. And I thought, okay, that's funny. Um, no so big deal. I read the letter. I put it, I, I save it because I thought, hey, my first hate mail, that's a, that's a keeper. That is, that's up there with the first dollar of the business. Two weeks later, I get another letter continuing this whole thing about me being released. It's inevitable. It should be within the next 30 days. I'm kind of laughing about it. And then he goes on to insult me a few more times. Then the next few letters, and by the way, there's no return, there's no return, you know, address. So then the guy goes on, he writes another one. This one's just insulting. Then he writes another one. This guy wrote me a letter. It, it ended up being about once a month for about three or four years. I had about 50 of them. At one point, SIS, which is the internal kind of security for federal prisons, intercepts one of the letters and reads it. They call me into SIS and I go in. I go, yeah, what's up? And they said, listen, we got this letter. And I go, okay. And he, he opens it up. And he says, have you, have you, he said, um, and he goes, and he starts reading it. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. That's that guy from the law firm. Right. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, but this is, this is really disturbing that. And I went, oh, I know. I said, did he say the thing about having to eat, you know, uh, the food has uh, toenails in it and semen and I'm probably being raped and all these other, and he goes, yeah, yeah, he does. I go, oh yeah. Yeah. I said, yeah, he's got some problems. And he goes, have you received these before? And I went, Oh, bro. I said, I got like 40 or 50 of them. I got a stack in my, it was under a rubber band in my, in my locker. And he went, I said, but listen, there's no return address. He's writing the letters, photocopying them, folding them up and sticking them in there and then tapes the outside. I said, there's no DNA. There's no, you're not tracking. Am I going to be honest with you? I said, what's, it's not that big of a deal. And I said, in a very real way, I said, I kind of enjoy getting the letters. I like hearing my name called at mail call. I said, to be honest with you, I said, it's kind of like he's doing time with me. It's, it's been almost four years. Like, it's like he's a pen pal almost. I said, but I can't reciprocate, which is too bad because I'd love to write him back. 
And this, and you know, the guy from SIS just shaking his head, looking at me like he's like, You've got problems. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, like, Give me my letter, bro. We add it to the pile. So I take the letter. And he goes, listen, if you want, he said, I can, I can forward all that to like the FBI. And I said, ah, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, so, so I'm saying I've had horrible, you know, really disturbing. And, and that guy was probably like, that guy actually could put, he, he, he was dedicated mm -hmm. to trying to upset me, but which is very difficult to upset me. Um, but this guy, let's say, Logan. Logan goes on, on, on and on. Yeah, it's, it's bad. So this was another one. Listen, uh, fucking Mick ain't shit ratted because you couldn't handle the time. You should have just opened your veins up. Very upsetting, very disturbed. And then here's what bothered me. So he keeps going. Then he starts talking about, uh, he's going to, about how he's going to kill my kids. I don't have kids. I got, I have one kid. He's not even a kid now. He's a grown man. Um, then he goes back to the wife. Then I notice, and I didn't think when I'm reading this, I'm kind of like, what an idiot. And then I realize this guy has tried to call me several times. It was like 11, 11 AM. You know, then at night he tried to call me. So then I'm like, he, this guy's reaching out to me. Then he sent even more. Then, um, so then I responded to him. Listen, it went on and on and on without me saying anything. This guy spent an hour or 30 minutes to an hour just writing one fucked up text after another. So finally, I said, you seem very angry. Sorry, your life isn't working out the way you'd, you'd hoped. Maybe if you see someone about your anger issues, things will get better for you. I feel I'm being very polite. That's very positive. It's, it's... Trying to understand. Immediately, he comes back. Maybe if you open your veins, pussy boy, I mean, it just goes, you know, it's, uh, uh, I'll fuck your wife till she smiles. Then I'll put one in her cortex. I'm assuming that means a bullet in her cortex killer, right? Yeah. Cool. Put one in her. Yeah. What's the one going to be in her cortex? I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that he's talking about a bullet. Up. Yeah. It doesn't sound good. It sounds like an adolescent that just learned cuss words. I wish I could say that. So then he keeps, listen, I can't even tell you, like it's a whole nother slew of texts. And it's a whole nother slew of texts where I respond. I don't, oh, then it was, uh, he, then he, then he was, then he starts talking about raping my daughter. And then I said, I don't have a daughter. And then he says, <laughs> He says, have one so I can beat her face to a pulp. I'll fuck your wife till she smiles. Then I'll put one in her cortex. He goes on and on. And I respond. He goes, it keeps it, it, it more of the same. Then I end up saying, uh, oh, then he calls me a, a Mick again. And I put, I'm not a Mick. I'm Norwegian. That would make, uh, uh, that would make me Nordic. And then he says, you bleed out in the bathtub, and then he said, "Then he go, then he starts calling me a, a rat. All Norwegian fucks are dirty, subhuman, pussy ass animals. Really, oh, that's unfair to classify you. all Norwegians. And this I guy mean, is not politically correct. He doesn't know all Norwegians. No. Like me, okay, fine. You know, I get it. You're angry. It goes on and on and more, and then." I put this, uh, I put, um, is this how you get attention? Did your mother not pay enough attention to you as a child? And that really didn't go well at all. I don't, I, some of this, I can't even say, Upset him. uh, it goes on and on, you know, very, very disparaging, disparaging, uh, comments. Then, uh, uh, what did I, what I, then I think I said something like guys like you don't, oh, he was basically telling me. He wanted my, I think he's, this is where he's, oh, he says, send me your address address. I'm going to come to your house and kill you. Like, why would I give you, I'm not going to give you my address. If you're going to come to my house and kill me, that's just silly. Yeah. That would be, that would be a smart move. Yeah. And then I put guys like you don't come to people's houses. Uh, you say raunchy things over the internet, but you never make good on them. In fact, I don't think you would meet me anywhere. That's assuming you even have the ability to get yourself from one point to another that didn't go over well more uh, then he calls more uh -huh. horrible things and then he calls 
Um, oh, and, and then he called, but I didn't answer because I didn't realize it was a call. Because I, um, I think I put the phone down or something. Then I put down, why don't you send me your full address? <laughs> or, you, you know, or no, your full name and your address. And then he put, so you can call the police, you rat. You know, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and so, more, but a few mortgages. <laughs> right. Then he, then I, then he says that, uh, Falu, what'd you call it? Falu, Falucio? Falu, Luke. Faluk. Then he calls me a Faluk again, you know, um, and I asked what that was. I'm fairly positive as a slang term for homosexual in a town. Yeah, that's what he said, but not nearly as eloquently as you did. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, more, I more raise the rate. And then he, oh, wait, what was this? I put, bro, you've got some real problems. I feel like, I feel, so, I feel like someone like you couldn't possibly survive in society. You couldn't possibly be holding down a job. Are you on some kind of disability? You know, some kind of like gets a check, like a crazy check or something, right? Yeah, like, you, you know, quite possible. Uh, something about burning my, my grandmother. And I had to explain to him that my grandmother's deceased. Uh, he really wants to harm people around me, but I don't have really anybody around me. Most of them are either deceased or they're adults and they don't live around. So, you know, talk about my mom, you know, just, you know, it's like, okay, she's deceased. You can't hurt her either. So he goes on and on. Then he calls me. So I'm not going to go through because this went on for like another hour or so, right? It's like, it's almost comical how long it goes on. This middle of the day here. Oh, li listen, it, yeah, it, it, look, it literally goes on and on and on and on. Like, I'm not gonna. Is that him? No, this is a guy that I, I interviewed. Oh, um, you know, I said, people send me stuff for the, for the thumbnail. I was about to say, a tough looking customer. He is. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> What ends up happening is he calls me, but this time I realize it's a call, right? So I answer it. Listen, <laughs> this guy's angry. He's he, so here's what I could see in my head because I can hear people in the background talking, but they're walking by, right? Like it's like some of these guys are talking and you're walking so you can hear them like, you know, and they go on by and you can hear street traffic. People are walking. There's horns. There's like this is not something you're not walking down a, a suburban neighborhood. You're in a city. Right. He also sounded like he had uh, an accent. Now, I know people are going to get upset about this, but I couldn't tell you, you know, I'm from the south and I couldn't tell you the difference between a Boston accent a Philadelphia accent and New York accent. They're all Yankee accents to me. So I can notice a big difference between Boston and Philly. Oh, okay. I guess well, if I heard well, Boston and New York, I guess I should say it's, it's okay. really, but then again, you've also watched every Goodfellas movie about 50 times. So I, I I've watched them maybe twice. I think I've probably seen Goodfellas twice. I've seen the Godfather, all the Godfather's movies at least once. Well, the thing about Charleston, where I live at, is hardly anyone here is from here. They're from all other places. So I actually worked with a guy that was from Boston, Massachusetts, grew up in the area where the Winter Hill Gang operated. He, I think he said he actually played some kind of sport um, with the guy that uh, Weeks, Kevin Weeks, from White oh, yeah. uh, Gang. Uh, but like he was as Boston as you can get. And then obviously, yes, I have watched a lot of, you know, mob movies or, you know, with Italian accents and they're very different, uh, at least my experience. And I listened to that. Me, me and I, I used to get cracked up listening at him talk and we worked together for about three years, but it is noticeably different if you're here, especially if you're around them all the time, you can really tell the difference. Well, it, in the, I don't know if it was six minutes or seven minutes that we spoke or. Oh, it was, it was a while. Now keep in mind, 95% of the conversation was just him screaming <laughs> while walking down the street. So this is some guy who's walking down the street. <laughs> I mean, that's what he's doing. He's running down the street like, ah. I mean, it was insanity, bro. <laughs> it was insane. And it was, it was the same kind of gibberish. Only the difference was. This time, now, all the, I didn't understand what all of this, and in this whole text thing, he, 
I don't, well, he may have, but he, I didn't connect it. I kind of connected it because the only real backlash I've gotten is because of Merlino. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, maybe I kind of thought it was probably related to that, but when he specifically starts saying, you're a lion piece of shit. You never sat at the table with Merlino. He would never sit at the table with a rat. You're a liar. You've got it. What, what I'm going to do to you, you've got coming. I'm going to find you. I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to kill your wife. I'm go- well, at first it was, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fuck your wife uh, in front of you. I'm going to make her beg. I'm going to kill you. I'm go- I mean, it went on and on. Merlino is the man you'll never be. Probably true. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, but you know, just, I mean, you know, how dare you fucking talk? You keep his name out of your mouth. You fucking, I think he called me a Mick again. I tried to correct him. I'm Norwegian. Um, you know, hundred percent Nordic. I've, I've got the, try to explain that I've, I've got the ancestry report. He didn't want to hear it. Uh, didn't want to hear when he was ta- once again talked about my daughter, which I don't have. I said, I, I tried trying to tell you, bro, I don't have a daughter, but I hear you. I hear you. I just don't want you to grab the wrong person. And I said, look, <laughs> I said, I said, look, I said, I think we should talk about this in person. Why don't you go ahead and meet me somewhere? Uh, in, you know, I said, I said, matter of fact, I said, we can meet halfway. I said, not that I think that you're going to be able to even get yourself out of the state that you're in. I said, you sound like you're walking down the street. I, you clearly, you don't have a car. <laughs> And who the fuck walks down the street if they have a car, right? But he's got to live in a city. So, but he's going absolutely ballistic. And I, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm partially laughing, but the comment section is weird, right? It's very detached. But when you speak to someone on the phone, it becomes real. Yeah, a little different, a little different. And at that moment, I thought, this could be a problem. Like... This guy sounds so unhinged, like somebody would probably have to give him a ride. Like if he could get his mom to give him a ride down to, to Tampa and find my address and drop him off here. And somebody would obviously have to purchase, you know, the, the gun for him, um, uh, you know, give him a weapon. Then, you know, maybe he could actually do some harm or something. I mean, I don't see this guy being great at, you know, target practice or anything. I'm not saying he's a professional killer, but this is the kind of idiot that is dangerous because you know he's a crash test dummy yeah like he's the kind of guy that will go hey have so and so do it you know have so and so go you know burn down the car or burn up a car burn up the building or you get him to do stuff that nobody else will do because it makes him feel important but this guy was very specific that i had somehow insulted merlino and he was going to take retribution on me because merlino said i was lying And in my opinion, you know, that's, that's, you know, like, first of all, I'm not lying. So you're telling people that I'm lying. And as a result, people are now coming after me because you're saying something that's false. So not, it's not, so it's not good. That's definitely line. uh, That's habitual line stepping, I think, is the uh, term that's thrown around these days. These days, how is the missus uh, responding to these messages? She's kind of involved in there a little bit. Typically, she like like initially when someone would say something, uh, you know, disparaging about me, she would kind of stand up for me. Like I'd check the comment section and see this little back and forth with her. And I'm like, what are you doing? Don't (laughs) respond to these knuckleheads. And she's like, what? He, he called you a rat. And I go, I am a rat. <laughs> what do you fucking think? I'm like, I look, I prefer co-op, you know, I prefer, you know, cooperation yeah. for a cooperator, you know, but that's fine. Whatever. You don't get to choose your, you know, adjectives. So um, he goes, you know, they're going on and on. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. She goes back and forth with people and I've seen her do it a few times. And, but that was when we first started seeing each other. Right. Now she just kind of laughs it off. But when she came home after that whole thing, because eventually this guy, you know, like I'm kind of just talking to him, making little smart ass cracks and stuff, right? Because I'm a, I'm a badass over the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sassy 
over the phone, you know, but this guy, he's un, he is unmanageable. Typically, honestly, if you talk to people, you can calm them down, right? right? This guy was like, he's not listening to anything. He's, he's screaming at the top of his lungs. And then he's like asking questions and I'm actually going to answer the questions, which is really stupid. So, you know, I'm like, you know, he's saying stuff and I'm like, well, no, that's not what happened. Ah! You know, he just, I'm like, oh my God. So anyway, six or eight minutes or whatever, five minutes, whatever it went, um, hangs up the phone, just literally. 20 minutes later, after I had screenshotted all of the, the conversation and sent it to you, she walks in the door, like for lunch. And I'm like, hey, baby. And she's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I go, um, and I really sat there and I thought, do I say something? She already told me, do not mention this guy, Merlino, again. Yeah. Don't. People are, it, it, the hatred is overwhelming. She's like, it is insane. She had already said, you don't know what one of these fucking idiots will do. So you need to just stop. And I go, I'm not, I got all I said was this one thing. And, you know, and she's like, she's like, okay, well you said it and it's out there and that's fine. And enough. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then this, and I said, so I was thinking, God, do you say something? And you I went, the right. <laughs> I said, I said, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you start that conversation, you know, uh, uh, and you just let you have to kind of lay the groundwork. Like, please keep this in mind during this conversation. Find a good spot to slip it in there. Yeah. So she says, uh, what happened? And I went, <laughs> I said, so got a weird little text thing going on. And she's like, what's that? And I go, well, this guy hit me up on IG on Instagram. And she's okay. And I said, I'm going to read you a couple of the things that he said. And then I, I read them off and she's like, what? And you know, I kind of, well, you know, raise the rate. And I go, well, this is this thing. They also sent this to, for clarification. Um, you know, and then I sit, read a couple more and she's like, oh, what an idiot. I said, yeah. And then I kind of went, Shh, Shh. <laughs> she's like, oh my God, how long is this? I go, it's been going on a while. And I said, she, and she goes, you responded? And I was like, yeah. And she's, and I said, that's not the bad part. The bad part is he called. I said, he called like 30 minutes ago. And she was like, well, at that point you responded to what I sent you. You like laughed or said something or said that sound, whatever you said, that's disturbing or whatever yeah, you yeah. came back after reading. Him. <laughs> and I sense. said, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I said, uh, so I told her, I said, yeah, I said, he called and here's what he said. And I started telling him her what he said and she was like this is do you understand me this is enough all right like, i'm not doing anything <laughs> i didn't do anything so um so yeah uh so do you know so yeah i i screenshotted everything made a little file um forwarded it to a friend of mine who's an investigator who's I need to track down the guy's name and information. He's like, yeah, so far what we can tell, I don't think he's really that much, you know, that's going to be that much of an issue based on what we're looking at. He's like, Matt, guys that do stuff. He's like, serious people don't do this. Yeah, they're not going to they talk about yeah. it. You just open your door one day and that's it. You know, yeah. they don't talk about it. They don't leave a, a trail. But, but these types of people are the kinds of people that affects, in, in some ways, both Joey and you. Because he's doing something because he probably thinks Joey would say, oh, good job. When actually right. Joey could probably really give a fuck. I mean, yeah, I, listen, I was shocked that Joey even responded to the, to that video that, to what I said, I was, I was, I was in shock, but at the same time, I think he realizes that when you give this sort of content, this kind of YouTube wars, I guess, if you will, number one, it's a lot safer. Um, but it's also views, you know, I oh, mean, yeah. it's part of the game. And a lot of people realize that. I mean, that's why Gene is, is so popular. That's why Sammy is so popular. I mean, it, it does create controversy. Controversy equals cash. It's, you know, a tale as old as time, but with, with this guy doing that, that could be something that he would do to you, which obviously puts you in harm. 
but he, in his warped, demented mind, he's thinking he's going to get like a high five from Joey. Like he's going yeah, to, he thinks you know, he's the soldier. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks he's really in the, you know, involved take, with him or something. Yeah. He's going to take care of that fist for Joey. So it's, it's bad on that part because obviously he's going to harm you and it's, you know, it would, it would eventually, I'm sure it would get linked to like, oh, well, Joey influenced this when he, you know, are you serious? Bro, I feel like Joey put a hit out on me. <laughs> That's what I think when but Joey think said, I did. said was a lie, which wasn't a lie, by the way, when Joey said all of that, I feel like he put a target on my, on my back. He's, it's like screaming fire in a crowded theater. Like, what, what are you thinking, bro? I told the truth. What I said was true. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love that you don't even want to respond. Um, My God. So, shame on you. <laughs> oh. this guy, this guy, and this guy's unhinged. Yeah. He's walking down the street with the... He's doing this. He's, he's, he's nuts. If you had heard this guy, it's like when I heard him, I thought, Oh, this is not good. Did he sound like a grown man? Oh, he no, he was a grown man. Okay. He was a grown man. He was uh, definitely walking down a city street where, you know, who knows, you know, what his accent was. I don't know. It was Northern. Um, you know, was it Philadelphia or New York? I couldn't tell you. He was screaming so, so, you know, loud, but, uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So I, I, I feel like it's, it's definitely questionable. It's definitely questionable. Yeah. I would, um, it would, I've never had anybody do that. I'm, I'm everybody with me either in that video or any other video that I've ever done where somebody disliked something I said or, or whatever, anything has been strictly kept to the comments. Right. Um, I don't think anybody, I don't even think anybody has slid in the proverbial DMS to bash me like that. Uh, definitely no phone calls. No, I've, ne I've never got, that's the, actually, I think I would say probably, and I could be wrong, maybe a year or two ago. And I don't remember in the, you know, hit me up on Instagram. That's the first time I've ever had anybody track me down on Instagram to insult me, you know, and listen, 90, 99% of the people that leave comments are, are super positive unless they're just saying like, damn Cox, this is bottom of the barrel. Like, you know, <laughs> this is your worst video yet. And even then I feel like, yeah, he's got, you know, you're, he's right. It was pretty bad. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, I was going to say, uh, what's the guy's name? Little snuff. What, what's the guy's name? Little, little snuff. I've actually little spoken to him via TikTok. Oh, are, is, is he doing the show or uh, we, we discussed it. He said he was going to do it, but I haven't talked with him in a little bit. I was kind of busy through the end of January. I know they've kind of ramped up their thing on the, on the Patreon. So we haven't touched base, but he said at one time he was going to do it. So right. I don't know. Well, well you know, yeah. it, it's, it's like he's made the comment a few times. These guys are mentioning Joey's. Oh, they're they're just mentioning your name for views. Well, but that's that's what YouTube is. You yeah. That's the same reason Joey talks about you know Michael Franzese. Same reason he talks about Sammy the Bull. Same reason he's saying I'm going to expose all these rats. Like you're not doing it because you know because out of altruism. You're right. doing it because you're trying to get views. That's your concern. I think that's the, it should be the goal of anyone on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, not to get views, I don't really know what the hell you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, then, then get a, get a, uh, you know, Google drive and just, just make videos and put it on there and where nobody can watch it. Like if that's your goal is just, Oh, I'm no, I'm just doing this to document, uh, certain things in my life. Okay. Well then just keep that on your phone. Like you don't have to upload it to YouTube. There's a reason that you've monetized these videos and you're trying to get views. Correct. So. You know, it, it, it always kills me when people say that, but, uh, yeah, but it, it's, uh, that was definitely, definitely disturbing. Definitely. Yeah. Not good. And listen, my wife's not happy. <laughs> like that when she brought her into it, like, she's like, what did I do? Why do I have to be a part of this? You Guilt let him know. <laughs> you, you let him know. <laughs> um, no, she's not going to stand up for me. She's going to be like, what? He's upstairs. <laughs> I'm leaving. So, um, oh, you know, what's so funny. Uh, when I, she was leaving tonight to go to work and I said, uh, I said, oh, I got to, I have a video with, uh, with Wade in about, you know, 30 minutes. And she goes, oh man, she goes, shoot. She goes, I like listening to you guys. And I go, you, you hear me all the time. And she goes, well, it's mostly Wade. 
And I, <laughs> that's why I was like, I was like, you're so fucking mean, just a mean, you're, like she's get where I used to set her up all the time with these little comments. She's getting better and better. Like she's getting to a point now where she's getting to the point where she can get me to walk into them. Yeah. Well, that, that's, uh, that comes with experience. You listen to somebody do it and set you up long enough. You'll learn how to fire back. You should take the, you should be proud. Yeah. Yeah. But so, no, I mean, that, that's gotta be the, I mean, especially like it's one thing for somebody, like you said, to say you rad or this, that, or the other, but when you start like depicting violence, especially on your family members and then, you know, impending physical violence to you, that's another level. And it's like, so you would rather do all that. You would rather kill a kid, rape a wife right. and shoot a guy because he rat it. I don't even think it's that. I think it's that he's saying his biggest problem was that you said you you lied. sat at the table with Joey Merlino and you didn't. And the truth is I did. What's even so funny about it is I don't care. Like if, if I, I could care less, I, I just happened to mention, was I there with him? Yes. Did I see him all the time? Yeah. He worked out on the yard all the time. And I actually sat, sat at the table with him several times. That was it. Like to me, it was like an offhanded comment because it was 100% true. But the fact that then he comes out and says, that's a lie. It's like, well, wait a minute now. You could have said the truth because the truth is, I don't recall. Most likely either, or maybe he does recall. But he recalls and he doesn't want to admit it. Then what you say is, yeah, I don't recall that guy ever sitting with me. And if I had known he was a rat, I wouldn't have sat with him. Now, you, you mentioned something earlier, by the way. I wanted to clarify. Why would they send someone like Merlino to a place that is filled with people that cooperated and are sex offenders? Because Merlino's not going to do anything. He Right? Like, let's face it. A real, like, you can send old gangsters there in their 60s because it's a low and it's soft. Okay. And people, people, and I'm not going to say people don't get stabbed because they do get stabbed, but it's very rare. And there, there's a lot of fist fights there. But if you stay to yourself, nobody bothers you. So you can send a bunch of old mobsters there because they're old and they're in their 60s and 70s and they don't want any problems and it's soft and I'll just stay away from these, the, the weirdos and the, you know, like they don't care. Um, you can send Merlino there. He's high profile. And honestly, he's not a threat. He's locked up. He just wants to do his time and go home. Mm -hmm. Now, when they, when a guy like Merlino really, or Wes Watson or any of these guys get out, you know what they tell everybody? Oh, if I knew someone was a, a, a show, if I were locked up with a show, I walk up, you punch him immediately. You beat his ass. You, the truth is, that about 40 to 50% of the people at Coleman low have some kind of sex charge. Now, maybe they're not there on the sex charge there. Cause a lot of guys that are registered somewhere, right. And they've done some time, got out, started their life over again. And maybe they got picked up for drugs or they got picked up for something, some other crime. And so they end up going to prison under the new crime. But if you look into them, a lot of times you'll go, that's weird that they would send you here. But the truth is they sent you here. Because in your past, you have a sex crime. Ah. So, so for someone like Merlino, but still like openly, openly known, well, thirty to at least thirty percent of those guys are there. And but, two, it would probably also, and not, again, I'm not saying that he would need it, but also less of a chance of somebody trying to do something to him, probably, you know, for yeah, cloud or whatever. Exactly right. I don't. Yeah, you don't know you're. You're, you're right. And that's absolutely true. Like if he was in a medium or pen, then there's a chance somebody might try and do something to him right. just to look good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Just to right. just make a name or, you know, something like that. Right. I think right. that happened with Gotti. There's a, a famous story when Gotti uh, was in one of the prisons he was in. I don't know if it was Marion, Illinois, but him and another guy got into it over a beef, I think about the TV. And, you know, I, I don't think if they'd have gotten that argument, that guy wouldn't have beat up Gotti, but obviously it didn't hurt that he got to say, Hey, I beat up John Gotti, the former leader of the Gambinos. Yeah. I'm, it's just pathetic. Like it, Gotti was an old man at that point. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, you know, yeah, you beat sure. up an old man. So, um, but yeah, I think Merlino is very safe. He's very safe there. 
And let's face it, you know, what's so funny is, like I said, these guys get out and they're like, yeah, we, you know, you smash them. If you even know that somebody's a sex offender, the truth is you're surrounded by 50% sex offenders and, and rats and you don't do anything because the truth is that most of the prison stories are bullshit. Right. You know, now do people get, are there gangs? Yes. Are there riots? Yes. Are there fights and stabbings? Yes. But it's not like it's every day. And most of the time people bring that stuff on themselves. And, you know, and I wasn't just at the low. I was at the medium. I was in the U.S. Marshals uh, lockup. I was at, you know, I, I've been to prisons where there were, there were fights and stabbings and riots and, you know, but still most of those you bring that stuff on yourself, you know. Um, but yeah, he was, yeah, he was there and, and now he's saying that I'm not lying and now he's got his little henchmen are after me and they're going to kill. He's telling, he's practically put a hit on me. I feel like it's was... <laughs> like, I, yeah, Merlino put a hit out on me. It's, it's, not, good. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, again, well, a great call by me to pass. So I'm putting this on my chat. I thought, I thought I picked up that you might've felt a little offended, but I had a, I had a, a method to, uh, the, the the passing on that i was like i'm gonna let matt take uh all take the, the hit yeah. yeah not yeah. not literally not literally i didn't think it would turn into this uh, listen listen one of the best comments i heard the other day this was like a month or two ago um some guy in the comment section said this is a conversation between matt cox and his co-defendant it goes like this listen did i take did you hear me say this one did i tell uh, you this Listen, bro, if they catch me, I'm going to tell on you. You better bring somebody to tell on. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's fucking beautiful. Listen, I, you know what I used to say? Guys would be like, bro, Cox, man, like, you know, if we get on the street, we could do something. We can do this. I said, I said, look, I'll do something with you. I said, I'm going tell you right now, if they catch us, I said, you better hope they talk to you before they talk to me. <laughs> it would be like, damn, that's how it is. That's exactly how it is. I said, don't get it twisted. I seen one of the comments in that video was, uh, you and the hillbilly better watch it. My <laughs> uncle was Frankie bow. He's referring to Frank Balistrieri, but, um, yeah, it was just, it was like, and it started off like, okay. Like it was like a decent comment. Then it was a little hateful. Then it was damn near. It was downright insulting. And I was just like, oh my God. I would go back weekly because that thing, it was really the first one that we kind of did because you, me and you did that. Then I think you talked to Nadu, then the guy who recently was on Joey's podcast, uh, Clawson. Right. But that was kind of like the first one. And it was right after uh, him and Gene had got into it and they kind of mixed words. So it was, we done it at the right time to, to get the heat on it. But um, you, you know what's funny about that? Um, like when, when, uh, Claus and I did that video and he mentioned, he mentioned Merlino, I had no clue. Like, I didn't know that was even coming. He just said, and you know, and they started asking me about a guy that actually, you know, and I was like, who's that? And he was like, yeah, Joey Merlino. I was like, oh, I was like, oh. and then it dawned on me. I was like, oh, wait a minute. All of his, your whole thing took place in Philadelphia. Like, oh, okay. What was that? But I was going to say, you know what our video got? That first video we did has, um, yeah, it's got 115,000. This is YouTube studio, by the way, 115,000 views. That's impressive. Actually, I think our other one has like 80 or 90,000 views. I think your video that you did. Yeah. It's your, only your like interview, it has, yeah, it's, it's over that, right? It's over but, 90. Like yeah, like 92 years? or 93, somewhere along oh. there. Yeah, that one did well. Um, feel, I, I'm, I'm hoping this doesn't go bad. <laughs> Has he tried to contact you anymore? No. He told me, don't text me again. But you texted me. I don't, like, I don't I think that's you. classified as a text. Yeah, well, it, that would, yeah. don't. Well, he just yelled at me on the phone and said it when he was like, well, fucking whatever, you know, whatever he said, don't text me, don't message me again and hung up. And I was well, he like, he contacts you, threatens you, and then you respond and he's mad because you're responding. I mean, I, I feel like, look, I always just want, 
you know, I feel like honestly, what I think would solve this, I feel like Logan needs a hug. Like if I could just give Logan a big hug and tell him just to cry and just kind of cry it out. You know what I'm saying? Just hug it out, bitch. You know what I mean? Give him a pat on the back. Let him just cry from all that, the love that he didn't experience as a child that's got him so angry. I just, I care about Logan. <laughs> Your goddamn phone's going to be blowing up if this <laughs> man sees this. I want Logan to be okay. <laughs> I want him to get a car and not have to walk the city streets. <laughs> this better be a short right here. You, Cause you know, he follows you. He's got to follow you. Of course he does. He's a fan. That's the beauty part about all this. Right? that People don't understand is when people like do videos, disparaging other people or other channels, when they go there, if they had never heard of you and, and maybe some of his audience have heard of you, maybe they hadn't. But if they go there nine times out of 10, even if they don't like you, they're going to hit the subscribe just to see what you do. We'll see what this motherfucker is doing today. I hope everybody doesn't like me and subscribes to see what I'm doing today or tomorrow. Listen, if I had half a million subscribers and all my videos were getting a hundred thousand views and at plus, I don't care if 95% of the comments are just are exactly like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with it. My dad, uh, my son asked me one time, he's like, he was reading some of the comments. I think I was on a TikTok. He's like, when people say things like this, don't bother you. I'm like, no, I was like, they're watching. That's all I care about. Like it's, 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 you want them to watch. Yeah. That's like, it. I, I would, I'll respond to some, if I'm bored or like I'm in a, you know, airport or something like that, I'll go through some of the videos and I'll, I'll reply back to some of them, especially if it's, you know, I like kind of riling people up, but, um, you know, it, well, it, it's never bothered me. What's funny about it is if you're, I love the guys that leave comments and say, this guy's a piece of garbage, piece of shit. I, I would never support him. You just did. Yeah. <laughs> you just left a comment. Like interaction is one of the best possible. Sharing the video is the best. Yeah. Now, hitting the like button up or down doesn't mean much. Sharing the video is the most important one. Then leaving a comment and interaction in the comment section. The next matrix is the thumbs up. And of course, length of watch time. If you watch like the bulk of the video, then that's also a huge uh, uh, push on the uh, algorithm as far as the, the as far as the um, factors are concerned with uh, YouTube's decision to push your video. So, you know, it, love me or hate me. If you're watching, commenting and sharing. You're a fan, right? You're whether you know it or realize it or not, you're supporting. Yeah. And yep. then subscribing. See, that's pretty good too. Is there some, is there something to the million views, Mark, that you get thrown into the algorithm a little more, or is that, I don't know. And I don't feel like I'm ever going to know. I, you're way past a million. <laughs> At the rate I'm going, I'm never going to know. You're way past a million. You gotta be a, mil a million. What? Like total view. No, 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 no. So total mean. views. Oh yeah. No, I, I get between four and a half and I'm sorry, but I get between 1.5 million and 2 million views uh, a month. Okay. Well, we weren't going that way. You made me feel bad. I was just I'm, meaning in total. <laughs> from oh no. It's like 40, to current, maybe I, I, 40 million, 30, 40 million in total. Uh, and the channel has been about three, a little over three years. Yeah, You're still making me feel worse about myself and my channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but think about it. A year ago, listen, I, I, a year ago, I had 50, about 40 or 50,000 views. I, I had a couple good videos and it just blew, and it took me two, over two years to get 50,000 views, over two years. And keep in mind, too, I'm actively going on people's channels. You're talking about subs, right? You, are you I'm just, sorry. Just, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. You're right. Subs. Okay. Two a year ago and change, I had fifty thousand subscribers, and that took me a little over two years to get. And that's me actively going on people's channels, pushing my video. That what blew it up was I had a couple of good. I had I had like two good videos in a row, and then I after that I've had a few good videos, and then also I've had a few videos that like did okay. They got twenty or thirty thousand views. And then trailed off. And then three months later, boom, they got 150,000 views in the, over the next month and a half. And it's like, I don't even know what happened. Right. But, you know, and then periodically I'll go on somebody's channel, kind of like um, 
when you went on Ian Bick and you've got yeah. a couple of shorts that um that got like millions you've got millions of views on on tiktok right on his tiktoks or his shorts tiktok yeah yeah so yeah you've got millions of views you know that you get a huge boost in your subscribers because of that uh i got about six or seven thousand new views within about a week and a half a, a new subscriber like about six thousand new subscribers within let's say a week to a week and a half after i went on um, Lex Friedman, right. You know, I'm hoping to go on, uh, Michael Franzi's channel. Uh, I I've texted him a couple times. I'm trying to basically just get on the phone where we can arrange a time for me to fly out. Right. Is he, so, still, is he in LA or is he, he said he's in LA? Yeah. Okay. That would be awesome to get on. Yeah. And he was like, you know, he's like, Hey, if you want, we can do it remote. I was like, no, no. Like I, I understand that being in person does a lot more for, you know, like on his channel, he, he, all of his videos getting 100, 400,000, 500,000, a million views. Like if I go out there and I get 500,000 views on a video with him, that's going to give me a little boost. And, and I don't think that his subscribers are my subscribers. Correct. I think it's a different market. It is, but he's, he's branching out a little bit. I think we, we covered that in this video that we're referencing. Michael has. I don't say he's run the well dry with his story and, and covering things with the mob. And it's, it's still very interesting, but anybody that knows Michael knows his story and his role. So I think it's got to the point now where if he's going to grow bigger than, than what he is, he's got to start branching out and getting into other stories, even other, you know, criminals. He had a guy named, uh, Johnny Yang, I think is his name, uh, machine gun, Johnny Yang who was a, a different, I don't want to say the wrong nationality because I don't want to get crucified, but he was either like Chinese or, or something like that. But he was a, a, a big mobster. They'd done a show on him, a show uh, American Gangster. I think they used to do it to highlight different people. They highlighted him in one of those. Uh, so he's starting to, you know, still kind of stay with the crime element, but but branch out and do different things. And I think that would be, that would be a good fit. You'd be a good fit on there. And he's a good interviewer too. Yeah, I was going to say he's sharp enough to do it. Yeah. You know, he's charismatic enough. He's he's um yeah, he's definitely he's he's <laughs> good enough to to do interviews. I don't think everybody has that that talent. Well, he honed it because he started doing a lot of traveling and speaking, you know, when he got religious and he was he would speak at churches and and things like that. So he was kind of maybe I don't want to say prepping, but inadvertently honing his skills, at least at talking, you know what I'm saying? Right. Back then. Um, then the podcast come later. So you were already before I, I think what helped me tell my story so good was the fact that I was listening to other people's tear their tell theirs for like, you know, a year and a half. So it kind of, you know, gave me a little bit of legway. And I think him doing all the speaking for, you know, the churches and things probably prepped him to do this because he, he is good at it. He's one of the, the guys that I watch. I don't have a ton of time to watch a lot of people, but I do watch his. Well, hopefully I can get on his. That would be cool. You know, fly out there, do his. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Did Gene, I, I don't know if Gene ever got on his. They were supposed to. Was he? I don't know. I Well, I know that he just got back from Europe, from uh, uh yeah. from the UK. Yeah. Europe, from uh, the UK, uh, where he was with uh, Sean Atwood. Yeah. Yep. I talked with that one not too long ago. He said that Michael was coming out there and they were going to do that. And then I think Gene's supposed to be doing something with Sammy, the bull here soon. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. <laughs> Gene, Gene knows how to get views. Like he doesn't have a, I don't know if he has a standalone show, but he needs one. He does. I mean, I tried to talk to him about it and he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, you know, but he, he's, he's obviously all over the place, you know? Yeah. It's, well, I mean, he's, He's hot right now, especially on YouTube. He's, he's made the rounds in LA. I think he did the connect and some other podcasts. He's on a different one every day on his Instagram. Yeah. But I mean, that's the whole thing is like, if you have your own show and your own channel and you've got something, then all of, right. Like you're, it's a waste if you don't have some way to monetize that. Yeah. Like he's like, Oh, I'm promoting myself. Promoting what? Yeah. You got to drive him somewhere. I think you told me the very first time me and you ever spoke on the phone. 
you told me that she was like, my biggest mistake was not having a platform ready to go after I went on Danny's and I blew up. You just said I missed the huge window to capitalize on it. Yeah, there was a massive wave of basically within about six months, there was roughly six million views on videos on th between between four different four different platforms. There was six to seven million views within within a year. There was easily 8 million views. Yeah. And keep in mind that as far as advertising is concerned, a hundred thousand views is worth about 10 grand in advertising. Did you that make sense? So a million is a hundred thousand dollars. That means if there's eight within a year, I, I blew 800,000 potential advertising dollars. That could have been half a million subscribers oh, to easy. a channel if I just been putting up one stupid video a week. And Danny, Danny, you know, from Concrete, if anybody's watching, Danny told me, you know, Danny didn't, he wasn't as emphatic as I probably, looking back, feel he should have been. But the truth is, he didn't know. Like, yeah. he was saying, look, I can't promise you that this video is going to do great. He's like, I feel like it's going to go viral. It's going to blow up. He said, but I mean, it may not do anything. He said, but I don't see that. You've got an amazing story. You told it great. He said, I think it's going to be huge. You need to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't have the right stuff. And I don't, you know, and I just fucking went straight pussy and didn't do any of the things he told me to do. He's like, use your cell phone. You don't have a camera? No, use your cell phone. You've got an iPhone. They got great cameras. I'm like, I don't want to do that. You know, and I was like, I want a professional. I yeah. want, you know, the same shit I still don't have. So, um, you know, I, I want, you know, I want an, a sound engineer and I want to have, you know, I wanted to do a heavily produced true crime serial style podcast, which yeah. to this day I've never done. So, you know, it, I didn't realize what he meant was, you know, just put the, and he, he even, I'm not even that he did. He told me, he said, take the camera, sit it in front of you and just start telling your story, break it up. And I was like, yeah, I don't really have editing software. And he goes, you can do it on your phone. There's free phone. There's free. And I, he was explaining it. And I, I just kept, no, no, no. And he was, he looked at me and finally he was like, okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> like he, he, he was like, okay. You know, and I get it because I probably would have been the same way. Okay. Yeah. You want to be an, a, an idiot. He didn't push it hard enough because he didn't know for sure. I think now if we went back and he knew, Hey, that video is going to get 2 million views and it's going to spark you going here and getting 2 million and here and getting 2 million and here. I think if he'd known that he'd have told me, let me explain to you what's happening. Yeah. But he didn't know. And, and I was just such an asshole and such an arrogant prick as I tend to be. I totally just fucked myself. And so what happens is now I'm starting, I had to start from ground zero and just scratch my way up. And all this hard work and Logan's about to end it all here when he catches. Yeah. And then Logan comes around the Tampa Bay. <laughs> so he puts a hit out on me. He's got a hit man out there threatening me, trying to figure trees. Logan right now is probably panhandling, trying to get money together so he can get a train ticket to come down to Florida, hike into Tampa. Ooh. and try and find my, you know, my subdivision. And then, you know, watch you, Logan actually be like, like four foot eight. You come down here with a pistol that doesn't work. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that pistol away. Back his little ass. Room. You would be <laughs> like the biggest cautionary tale of YouTube. <laughs> He's trying to shoot. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to beat your ass, little Logan. <laughs> Luckily, you're four foot 11, and I can. It would be the biggest cautionary tale of YouTube. You would go down in infamy if, the, if something bad were to happen. And right. it would, then I'd get a million subscribers. Yeah, you would get a million. You wouldn't I be wouldn't able enjoy to, it. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to uh, benefit from it. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, maybe they could trickle on over here to crime and entertainment, hit that like subscribe button. You and I've done a lot of good stuff together. So I mean, they gotta go that. somewhere. They gotta go somewhere, Matt. You know, Colby, when you say, when you do, when you do the, the, uh, um, the De Niro, uh, you insult him a little bit. Insult him a little it's bit. too bad. Colby should clip that in there. I didn't insult him. him a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's you a can short. really have fun with this video. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
I think I'm, oh. wearing, I think I'm gonna name it. Uh, Joey Merlino put a hit out on me. You got to. That's you can't not do that. That's <laughs> you know, it's total. And what people get upset like, who's fucking clickbait? Of course, it's clickbait. Have you not been paying attention? I, I actually, it's, it's, it's you know, I don't feel, I even feel it's clickbait. Yeah, honestly, I yeah. think they got more on. If I got hurt right now, they've got more on Merlino inciting someone to kill me than they do on Trump inciting an insurrection. Yeah. What did he say? You know what you got to do? Well, they're gonna, they'll still charge Joe. You can believe that. That, that guy that you had on. Listen, was, as they should, I wish I could be there to testify, but if, but for this whole thing to work out, I have to be. That, that guy that you had on Clausen, I was listening to a piece of the interview he did. And I guess basically from what I was understanding, they offered him a deal or to, to walk from his charges. If he just said that Joey had something to do with it. Right. And he basically, this is what he said on their show was they said, was it, we didn't, you know, he didn't have anything to do with it. And he's like, it doesn't matter if he didn't, they just wanted his, his name. And I guess he, I, I haven't listened to his whole story. I guess he just told him he wasn't going to do it. I'm assuming he didn't, or he wouldn't be on their show. <laughs> I mean, listen, Joey's lucky they talked to him because I'd be like, what do you want Joey to be involved in? What do you want him to have said? He gets up at nine 30. He goes to the bagel listen, shop down the corner. Listen, this guy was running the whole operation. Are you, I met with him several times. Where do you think I met with him? That's where I met with him. What do you think happened during that, during those meetings? I, he did say that of course. Oh. Listen, Joey, let's be honest. I mean, I, and I feel bad, but I'm gonna put money on your books, bro. You can buy new tennis shoes. I'm going to, you can get, you can get, uh, uh, you know, they have these sausages called little chubs, which, you know, really it's the innuendo. The, I think that anyway, you know, you can get sausages in there. You can buy all your stuff from com You'll max out commissary. Like I'm, I'm going to support you, but I can't do all this time. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I love how upset you get. I love it. I'm, I'm trying to phrase my words very carefully. There's a, there's a movie. You ever seen this movie called black and white? No, it was from like the late nineties, early two thousands. And it had everybody in the movie and it, it, it did have a point, but like everybody had like these little small bit roles. Like Ben Stiller was in it. Joe Pantaleone was in it. Robert Downey Jr. was in it. Elijah Wood, Bijou Phillips, Mike Tyson. And it was just like, it followed around these group of rappers. I think some people from, um, what the hell? Wu-Tang Clan was in it. It was just like a, a hodgepodge of nothing really, but it actually was a decent movie. And, uh, this guy said he's talking to Mike Tyson and he's telling me he thinks this guy that he paid to throw a basketball game is going to turn him in. Like, cause now Ben Stiller's a cop. He finds out that the kid throws a basketball game. So he's talking to Mike Tyson and he's like, you know, so what do you think I ought to do? He's like, well, you know, if you got a problem, you should take care of the problem. And he says, you saying I should whack the motherfucker. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, I didn't, you know, how Mike Tyson talks. He's like, I didn't, I said nothing of the sort. I choose my words very carefully. My friend, I just said, if you have a problem, you should take care of the problem. I don't know what the problem is, but it was the way he said it was just is really funny. It was kind of reminded me of that. I choose my words very carefully when we're talking about this kind of stuff. I got to stay middle of the road. <sighs> Do you ever talk to your wife about this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. All the time. She okay. was, I talked to her about it. And I, I'll, I'll, I told her we were going to do this one. And she asked, she usually asks like what it's about and, she don't listen to it. She says she listens. And I ask her a question and she's like, well, I listened to the opener and heard his name and what he's doing. But I told her about this one. I was like, yes. And he got a little heat from it. She's like, nobody's reached out to you. Have they? And I'm like, no, no they have not. So I, I, I feel, jealous. I don't know if I want quite what you got, but I, I want a hater or two. No, no I, I promise you they're out there. Um, I feel, like you, I feel like you can't say you've made it until you have somebody hating on you like, I, I remember Whoopi Goldberg said she knew she'd made it when she, she was just a comedian. She was just doing comedy at the time, you know, whatever. And she said, but I knew like I had made it when Mad Magazine came out 
and was mocking her making they do true caricatures of yeah. her made fun of her everything she's like i remember thinking wow this is i've hit the big time i'm in a in a major magazine and they're mocking me yeah i'm going places i i i hear you yeah so, so I have a question. When, whenever we do these, do you ever get any, do you see anybody come over from this channel to your channel to crime and entertainment? Yeah. I've had a lot of people say, uh, so, so saw you on Matt Cox or, you know, saw you from a video with Matt Cox. And a lot of people seem to like the one, I know they don't get like a enormous amount of views, but people seem to really like the ones we do with Brett together. Yeah. Well, it's I, funny. All you and I have gotten tons of views. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, with Brett, I mean, Brett cracks me up. So, oh, yeah. but I think, I think the problem is probably the subject matter with me, you and Brett is like, how's our channel doing? Yeah. A little different than what most people were going to hop on as far as like a hot topic. Like we were, we weren't discussing the Merlino Morello beef and, right. and all that. I did see a short that he put out on Instagram because his Instagram shorts and stuff are getting a lot better. I know he said he's got a team doing it. But he was like, I'm going to tell you something. He's like, prison is full of people that told and people they wish that have told or wish would have yeah, wish yeah. would have told. Yeah, there's two kinds of people in prison. Those that told and those that wish they had. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I thought that was pretty uh, funny. His, his stuff's getting a, a lot better. The Like the quality of it and stuff. Oh, like it's that. super. Yeah, it's very. I don't understand why he, you know, he'll put out something and he'll get, you know, it gets 150, 200, 300 views. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like I've watched them and they're great. Like, That's why are these things not <laughs> taking off? I've had that same issue. Like there's some videos that I do that are really good and I think are good. And then some that, you know, just, just blow up for no reason. I don't understand the rhyme or the reason. I don't understand if it's like, if it doesn't make a, enough noise in that first threshold, then it doesn't get pushed. That's why I ask you about the million total views. Cause see, I've never done a live. I typically only do one video a week every now and again, if it's something special or like a hot topic or something, I'll throw one out in the middle of the week, but I generally only do one a week. And so my total views are almost at a million. It's at like 954,000. That's like so you're, you're banking everything. on a million being something. Well, that's why I asked you earlier. I was like, does that, is that a different, is that a, a certain number that throws you into more searches, more scrolls, more algorithms. I heard somebody say that a long time ago, but I didn't know if it was accurate. I don't know. I mean, you know, what's funny is the first few videos I did where I interviewed people did really well. Yeah. Um, like, but you know, it, one was, um, Mike Dowd. Oh yeah. Yeah. I it's think that was my first interview and it did really well. And I, I you know, it got like over a hundred thousand views. I think it's got like probably a couple hundred thousand now. And I just thought, wow. And the next video I did got 40 or 50,000. I was like, my God, this is going to be huge. And it wasn't. <laughs> and it just slowly went from like Mike Dowd. And then it just went, boop, 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 you know, and then it's ever since then just kind of, did, 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 did. and every once in a while, something will go up and, yeah. and I can never tell what it is. I'll interview some guy about aliens and it'll get 200,000 views and it'll be a shitty stream yard that I did. Like not even we, we were, the lighting's bad. Everything about it is just bad. It's not clear the whole thing, 200,000 views. And I'm like, what the hell? And then I'll do other ones where I think this is hilarious. This is great. 10,000 views. Yeah. Yeah. What I like about us all talking, you, me and Brett talking is I feel like, you know, when you get 10 or 12 of those and we can put them into a, a playlist, playlist. Yeah. I think it's for people that are starting YouTube channels. It'd be I very beneficial. Yeah, because I think you'll see like, hey, it's it's, you know, it's a struggle and what works and what doesn't work. And what's funny is what I'm a huge believer in is, you know, consistency. Yeah. Like you're, you're saying, you know, like you've been consistent. First of all, you don't put I know you probably feel like you put a lot of time into your stuff, into your videos, but, you know. You're doing one video a week. You also work a full-time job. Right. So let's say your one video is five extra hours a week of time, you know, including the hour video that you were do a 45 minute video. However, they're usually about under an hour, right? Yeah. Typically. Yeah. yeah. So roughly an hour. So let's say roughly an hour plus another three hours of editing and thumbnails and let's say four. So let's say five hours. 
you know, five hours a week, you know, five hour, extra five hours, like you're maintaining a full, you're maintaining a full-time job. If you started cutting, if you were able to cut into your job and put out an additional video and make them longer, then I think you would start to see more subscribers and more, you know, and, and revenue, you know, a, a drastically different revenue. The problem is you have a full-time job, right? You know, so it's like, where do you, it's hard to do. You have to, you have to kind of go either. I have to just wait it out and keep doing what I'm doing and slowly build the channel. Um, and hope that a, a video hits every once in a while, which they do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, or I have to start cutting into, I, I have to start cutting into, I can't cut into my job. I have to cut into my time with my family. Right. So that sucks. Yeah. And that's where it becomes hairy. And, and I have a lot of interviews saved up, but I think even from the very beginning, I always had that fear when I first started doing like interviews like this, that I would run out of, on a dry spell and not have anybody to talk to or not, you know, be able to put anything out. And then I'm like, damn, what do I do then? I've got a lot can, uh, especially with like movie stars. Um, and I, I use that term loosely. There were in movies, major movies, like the, you ever seen uh, adventures in babysitting? No, I've heard of, I've heard it. I've seen pieces. I know the movie you're talking about. Yeah. So the kid was in that, or I say kid, he's a grown man. Now he was in that he was in, um, the movie toy soldiers, which was, oh, his yeah, name's yeah, Keith yeah. Coogan. that was a good movie by the yeah, way. Oh, it was very good. He was Keith Coogan. You know, you know, remember which one he was, he was the guy that had the asthma. Oh, okay. In the, in that movie. So he's been in a bunch of stuff. He was in, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. He was huge in the eighties. Oh, I remember that one too. Yeah. So he was in that, um, he was the, the hippie, uh, son. The one that the one that lived there. Um, so I've got him and, and it was a great interview, but like, I don't feel a need that I have to put that out like this week. You know, that's something that I can plug in at any time. I had the yeah. girl that was on the night of the living dead, uh, movie from the nineties with George Romero when he did it. And Tony Todd, um, her name was Patricia Tallman. She was a stunt woman in a lot of other movies like long kiss. Good night and Jurassic park. So it was an interesting one and it's ready and I can fit that in there. But I felt like if I started doing two a week, you know, I would run out. Like I, I, if I didn't do an interview now for the rest of the year, I could probably almost close out the year with what I have canned. Oh man. That's, that's a ton. Yeah. And that's some of them, are, some of them are like really old. And, and that's why I like doing those things with you because I can give, I wish now I knew everything when I first started. I think, don't we all? But I'll go back and see some of those other ones like, man, I wish I could have done this different or it was a good interview. But in the beginning, my camera was shitty. Like when I interviewed like Lilo Brancato, that was the first one I did. Like my camera's so blurry compared to what I got now. And I mean, this right. still isn't like top notch, but it's better than what I had. Yeah, well, these are both yours. Is, I mean, mine's just the the what came with the computer, but you got um, a Mac. Yeah. Yeah, see, yours looks really good. I got a pretty high dollar webcam, and I'm just not as clean as you, but I've never owned no, yours. Is super clear right now. Yours is as clear as mine. Okay, see, mine, I guess, so. I don't know. I'm self conscious about my image. <laughs> I've never owned an Apple product, though. Never. That's, that's I know. Every time you send me a, a text, it's it's in green. Oh, is that? so just disgusted. <laughs> just. Well, all the help you get, you're like, you can go on this. And I'm like, that's for Apple. And yeah, yeah. Can't, can't do anything with that. Bro. Yeah. I'm like final cut pro, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, Photoshop. Uh, and you're just like, nah, nah, nah. Any of that. I'm a Da Vinci. Da Vinci has been my editing software since I started. Yeah. I know. Like it, having to learn something the first time is so horrific that if you said, oh, I'm here, use this program, man, I'm not learning another yeah. program like Colby and I. Colby's got, um, uh, premier pro, right? Yeah. That's what that's in that. That's the equivalent for like PCs yeah. uh, from uh, final cut pro. And that's what he uses. And like, I would like it if we were both using the exact same program, but let's face it. He's not going to re learn a bunch of stuff. And I'm certainly not going to, I'm too old. I'm lucky. I learned as much as I've learned. Right. So, you know, there's lots of stuff that I wish you know, we were all in the same programs because then we could help each other more. Yeah. And I'm sure there's different things that I could do to up it as far as, you know, effects here and there, but listen, DaVinci is free. I don't pay a dollar for it. I've learned how to use it. I've learned as time goes on, how to like overlay stuff and, 
you know, size things. You actually kind of taught me how to size things a little differently. So it would format and fit the, you know, the long view or whatever it is you call it. Um, you know, in the beginning, I wasn't even doing that. When I would do a TikTok, it would be like a box in the middle and right. nothing on the top and bottom, you know, yes. then I started doing that. And then I started adding B roll. And then I started changing the cover photo that I wasn't doing. You can, if you scroll through my TikTok, you can just see the progression of how I learned to get a little best. Like they look like shit. They look a little better. They look pretty good now. Yeah, it's fun and it's fun too. Like it's 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 super. It like editing is just it. It's really great. It, unfortunately, it'll I'll spend two hours on a fifty five second video that will get three thousand views, and then Colby's guy will come along and just do a hatchet job job on the same video as me, and I mean just chop 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 chop. And I'm like, that doesn't even really the story doesn't make sense. He kind of chopped it up. Like I get it, and it'll get a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand views. I'm like, I got like 1500 views or he's got one that's got like, you know, 6 million views. And he just like, <laughs> and I'm like, there's no B roll. There's no this. I'm not even sure what happened. You know, it's just so upsetting. And it's like, you know, some of them I dig, I'd like to, I get creative with too. I done one on the movie candy man and I took like 60 seconds and I done that thing. I figured out this thing to distort my voice a little bit and it makes it sound really cool. Right. And I just kind of talked about candy man, how he was, you know, told the backstory of it a little bit. And I put in different clips from the movie. Um, I told it like he was paid an extra thousand dollars every time he got stung by the bees. Um, and I thought it was like really cool and it didn't get like nowhere near the amount of views I thought it should, but I, I didn't really have a purpose for doing it. I didn't interview anybody from the movie. I just kind of had an idea in my head, kind of like a little amateur film director and put it together. But some of them, some of them do well. And then some of them just, you know, you think they're shitty, but the, they just go bonkers with it. And it's, yeah. it's really hard to, you know, decipher between the two. And I've found, I guess the, the main photos make a difference. Like whatever people see, does that make a difference when it, it's got to? Yeah. Cause if they see a Bradley Cooper on the front right. of it, you know, then they are like, Oh, and they click on it, you know, then one of the biggest ones I've done, it was a, it was a former mob guy. And he was talking about how, when they pulled this bank job and they went running out, this lady seen them coming out. So she turns and goes running out where like him and the guys kind of split. So he wound up running the same way as the lady did. Well, I guess when people reported it, they reported a lady running from the bank with the robbers. And so this lady actually got pulled over and questioned because it, I guess they fought, they watched her get into her car then that was reported. So she got pulled over and he's telling the story. So, a, uh, one of the, the clips is like a cop with his gun pointed like at the camera. And it was one of the best shorts I ever did. I just put that one little picture in there, not thinking that it would have that impact. And and it did. Listen, I, I'll tell you something like, you know, so when I tell my story, you know, like you can't even six hours, you can't tell yeah. all the stuff you've done. And there's some stuff like I just don't mention. Yeah. So one time I'll tell you this, cause this reminds me of what you just said. <laughs> One time, luckily, almost nobody's going to watch this much of the video. <laughs> One time, there, I, I was driving. There was a, a, a guy that worked for me. His name was Johnny Moon. Uh, that was his real name, by the way. His dad's name was Johnny Moon, too. So Johnny, Johnny Moon and I are driving through the, this neighborhood. And he goes, see that house right there? And I go, yeah. He said, my dad buys drugs from that guy. <laughs> I went, what? And he goes, yeah. He said, he's a drug dealer. He's been arrested four or five times, been in prison. He said his parents bought him that house. And I went, really? And he goes, yeah. His name was Walter Bean. And I went, huh. So they, there's no mortgage on the house. And Johnny goes, no. No, I don't think so. He goes, I mean, they paid for it cash. I went, no. <laughs> so I went downtown, pulled the, you know, got the address, pulled the um, title. And there was a lien on it. His parents had placed the lien on the house. It was in his name, but his parents put a lien on it because he's a drug at or he's a drug dealer. They were afraid he might sell the house or take out a mortgage that so they couldn't do anything because they had a lien on it. Uh. So I satisfied the lien. I then turned around and I made a fake ID. I went and opened a couple bank accounts in Walter Bean's name. 
I didn't have his social security number. So I used a, a issued social security number that was maybe a year or two old. And I borrowed three mortgages on the house. Now, typically the reason I don't mention this is because after I borrowed like, no, I, after I, I borrowed three, I deposited two of the checks. I was waiting to, I was about to deposit, I think the third check. And this is why I don't mention it because all, everything was going to like a UPS box, right? It was, it was actually, a, um, there was something called mailboxes, et cetera, but they got bought out. But so let's say UPS box. So it, everything was going to a UPS box. And what happened was in the midst of this whole me refinancing the house over and over again and pulling out all this money and depositing in the bank accounts, one of the people that I, one of the lenders that I had sent the appraisal to, there was, they had, it had accidentally been marked as being rule. When it was an ur house was urban, they put rule. Now all the other lenders overlooked it, but I had also used an appraiser's license to make the appraisal. So the lender contacted the appraiser and said, Hey, um, could you check this box? This house is rule, not urban. Go ahead and check that for us. And he went, what are you talking about? I haven't done an appraisal in years. <laughs> he was a retired, um, Hillsborough County detective. He was in his sixties and he said, send me that appraisal. So they sent him the appraisal. He contacted the Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County went and initially what they did, they, they pulled the title, they pulled the credit, pulled the title, looked at all the documents and real, and thought Walter Bean had refinanced his house three times. They went to Walter, Walter Bean's house, grabbed Walter Bean, who'd been in prison multiple times. Brought him downtown and questioned him for four to six hours. Can you imagine this poor guy? He's sitting, he's watching Barney Miller one day. And all of a sudden the cops, cops like bang on his door and drag him downtown. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. They're like, the money's in your bank account. That, you know, like he just, he's the whole time he's screaming. I don't know what you're, because eventually what happened was they realized he didn't have anything to do with it. So they, they started realizing that the address, the mailing address was different than his home address. So they watched the UPS box 24 hours a day for four or five days until I showed up one day to get mail. Uh. And then they followed me. They followed me and I was driving with a buddy of mine. And as we're, as we're driving, he, oh, well, actually he was driving as he, we're driving. He goes, Hey, uh, by the way, someone's following us. And I went, what? <laughs> he goes, somebody's following us. And I went, are you serious? He goes, yeah, look back there. She said, blue car. He goes, that car followed us out of the parking lot. And I went, fuck. I said, wait a minute. You know what? Try and lose them. So he speeds up and he's driving and he's speeding up and this and that. And, and to kind of swerve in a little bit. And they're, they're back there. Like they're kind of following. And I said, there's no way like, we're on the interstate at this point. We're on I 75. I said, you know what? Pull over. He goes, where I go right here, pull over and stop. So he pulls over the side of the road and stops on the interstate. That blue car went right by us and pulled over and stopped maybe 200 feet ahead. And then a car stopped behind us and I go, get out of the car. We got out, we changed and I fucking jumped in. It was an Audi, uh, an Audi TT Quattro, you know, which was like a two door sports car Audi had come out with and it was super fat. And I just, bro, just punched it and just. Whoa, I must've been going over 120 miles an hour, just, Whoa, you know, just insane. And then I swerved off the, uh, interstate went through like a church parking lot. Cause he's screaming, get, let me out of the car. Let me out of the car. I'm on probation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I pull over in a, I pull through a church parking lot. I whip around. I pull into a, a an apartment complex. He jumps out of the car and runs. I punch it, but somehow I I lost them. It didn't really matter because they had my tag. Yeah. So like three days later, I go to get in my car and I drive off, and they arrest me. And um, I get grabbed. I get brought downtown. I get out. I get I bond out, obviously. 
um, you know, I bond out. I end up having to pay the money back. I never mentioned that story because it was unsuccessful. Like I didn't get any money. Right. I fucked, I fucked up. One, by the way, that's whenever I talk about, you know, sometimes people hear me talk about the, they're like, well, you know, one of the reasons I would never do anything again is because I don't, I'm not concerned about my ability to pull off a scam. You just can't account for the fly in the ointment. Right. I didn't do the appraisal. I had someone else do the appraisal and we used another appraiser's license because obviously this guy doesn't want to use his license. Right. So we use someone else's license. I couldn't account for the fact that the guy I had do the appraisal made one check mark incorrectly. One check. If he hadn't made that check mark, you'd have never got caught. I'd have gotten about $500,000 and I'd have walked away. Now they would have still grabbed uh, Walter Bean, but nothing pointed to Walter Bean other than the fact that I'd stolen his idea. I didn't use his date of birth. I didn't know his date of birth. I didn't know his social security number. It's like his date of birth, social security number. The ID is clearly fake. Like the numbers don't go to his ID. I, nothing went to his address. Like they, once they looked at it, they would have been like, fuck it. There's just nothing here that points to him. What would have been really fucked up is if he'd had a lot of drugs in the house and they got the drugs too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, not just that. Listen, to, to be honest, he probably, now that I think about it, I think my plan was to take all this stuff I had used and dump it on him. Like I was going to leave the cell phone <laughs> and his, you know, drop the cell phone. You know, you, you, you came home and there was a cell phone in a box next to your front door in the box. You'd pick it up. Oh yeah. You'd bring it inside. You're like, I'm not going to leave it out. So somebody, if something's wrong. You'd pick it up and bring it inside. If I had a laptop and left a laptop on your front porch. You'd pick it up. Well, keep in mind, you don't realize that when you got to get the laptop, all the documents I'd used was on a separate laptop that had only been used for that purpose. Even if I erase them, when the cops get it and they, they go through it, they're going to find the erased documents. They're going to see like all of these documents have been made on this laptop that was found in your house. Yeah. Well, see, the average person I think would pick that up. I'm so fucking warp minded that I would be like, whatever's on that. I don't know if I want to open it up in my house. Right. Because then somebody's going to, they might be watching me. And when I take it in the house, they kick the fucking door down and then, you know, God knows what's on it. And they're pinning it on me. Not everybody's going to look that deep into it. No, I think this guy's, in, this guy was a scoundrel anyway. He yeah. Now, I doubt well, good old Willie it. Bean was going to go. go oh, I think he'd have opened up that phone and be like, <laughs> I got a, got a free cell phone. Started calling his buddies on it. I think he'd have, yeah, it would have been a problem. Like I had a whole scam, a whole thing set up where it was like, yeah, they'll grab him. Um, and I'll be fine. Eh, he'll be, he'll be fine. But you know, I didn't, it didn't get that far. You know, there's like this scene in that, uh, the spoof movie called scary movie. I yeah. You're watching. And at the end of it, when like the killer has been caught or whatever, the whole shtick is that the dad is a drug dealer and that's why he's gone. He's like, Oh, I got to go buy some drugs from these guys down here. So at the end, when the cops show up, he's like, you know, is the killer inside? And he's like, yeah. And a sick bastard planted drugs all in the house in there. You can go check it out. <laughs> That's why I always say when someone, someone comes and if, you know, the, the guy who's running a meth lab out of his house, you know, they come, the cops come and, you know why we're, you're here? Yeah. My girlfriend's running a meth lab out of this house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked that it's taking you this long. Yeah, I was just about to call you guys. Show up. I just found out myself. I'm appalled. <laughs> Oh, so did did you watch Better Call Saul? No, but everybody says, yeah. I seen a clip the other day that, I, and I watched Breaking Bad. That's the bad part is I watched Breaking Bad, so I know like who the character is and what it's based around. But I never did watch Better Call Saul, and they got this one where he's like, and it kind of reminds me of anybody that's you know with charisma, and the guys on there on the stand, and he's like, you know, are you sure you seen my client that day in the store? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like, you're, you're 100% positive. You've seen the man in that chair. The man right. in that chair is the one that robbed you. Oh yes. 100%. You don't need to take just a second. Nope. I uh, know it's him. And he's like, so you would probably be surprised to know that the guy in that chair is so-and-so he's not my client. My client's in the courtroom back here. Right. And so it, and the a judge is like, you know, I can't believe you did that. And he looks at him. He's like, you didn't recognize me either because yeah. they were really similar. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that seems, I don't know if that would work in a court of law, but it seemed very cunning and, and cool. 
there were there, there were uh, in Miami. I want to say it was I, I almost positive it was Miami. There were these two lawyers that were famous for representing drug dealers and murder, like just the worst of the worst. And there's a famous story about them where there's a murder. And one of the one of the they have all the evidence spread out on the table. And one of the attorneys puts his briefcase down just under the table and it's open. So it's one of those old kind of they open up like this. It's two handles and it's like a leather, but the whole front opens it up. It's not like a a suitcase. It opens up. He opens it up. And while there's everybody's kind of getting ready in the courtroom, right? Like he gets there early. He puts his puts his um <clears throat> the briefcase down and he's got a file in his hand and he's as he's talking to like the bailiff is supposed to be watching over all the stuff and US attorneys there and or the sorry the state attorneys there cuz this was mostly state he takes the uh he puts in front of he puts the envelope in front of the gun and he slips it off the table into the briefcase and then he put then he bends over and puts his brief his the envelope in the briefcase and picks up his briefcase. Like I was just like, he was just putting his briefcase down, does it right in front of everybody and walks out of the courtroom. What like he goes and hands the briefcase to like his secretary or something and says, bring this, get, get rid of this. And she walks off with it. And so 45 minutes to an hour later, when they're all sitting there talking, they've got the detective on the, on the stand. And as he's, um, as he's interviewing the detective or whatever you want, you know, cross-examining the detective, yeah. the detective goes, yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's when I found the gun. He's like, what gun? He's like, and, and he goes, well, that's when I found the gun over there. And then the, the U S attorney says, you know, your honor, you know, please note that, you know, exhibit number one Oh five is the, uh, you know, the, the weapon that was used and they go to look over at the weapon and it's not there. And he goes, your honor, where's the gun? And the U.S. attorneys, I mean, sorry, the, the district attorney looks around and the lawyer looks around. And he goes, yeah, where is the gun? And they go, they walk over and they're like, where? And they start looking around for it and looking and looking. He's like, he's like, your honor, I mean, if there's no gun, we're not going to be talking about finding a gun. Like if we don't have a gun, we, we shouldn't be talking about finding a gun on my client that we don't have. Where is this gun? I've never seen a gun. We have photographs of the gun. We, we have it. And he's like, well, I don't see the gun. How do we know that's the same gun that, that can, we have ballistics? Well, how do we know that? Where's the gun? I'd like to test the gun. And immediately it becomes fucking chaos. The state attorney starts screaming, you got rid of the gun. Where, how did I get, get rid of the gun? I walked in here with you. The bailiff's watching. Like, when did that happen? What do you think? How dare you? You know, I mean, the story is like they have one story like that after another. Like these guys were notorious. Oh, They've so been, they didn't get it back. It wasn't like a ploy. They just completely got rid of it. Oh, it's gone. He stole the gun. So they oh. keep, now guess what? We're, we're either throwing out any, any, any discussion about a gun being found on my client, which was the only thing that connected him to the murders. Oh, okay. I was waiting for a tie back. Like you to come in and say, here, this is what I've done with it. Evans can be tampered with us. They just completely got rid of them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the whole case was thrown out or he took a, a lesser plea wow. or something like that. Like there was and there was a reason he had done that. Yeah. But these guys were over the top, just corrupt like they'd been disbarred, got their license back. I mean, they were they were drug addicts. I mean, they were like they were just horrific. And there's was a there was a book that I'd read where they were in it. It uh, was it was it was it was hilarious. They, they lawyers have an Instagram called Pot Brothers Law. Oh yeah, I was supposed to interview those guys. Oh, they they look funny as shit. What are you doing? I mean, not discussing my day. They tell you like how to talk to cops or whatever. Right. <laughs> shut, yeah. What's the the big one that blew them up? Was it shut the fuck up or something like that or something? It was a, like a tagline that they had when oh, you yeah, were yeah. talking to the cops. I can't remember what it was. But it's it's funny. Yeah. Stop telling on yourself, right? Like, um, are, they, yeah. are they in Florida? No, they're in, they're, I think they're in California and I was supposed to, I scheduled them and then one of them got sick. You know, one of the two brothers got like, yeah. I don't know, sick COVID or something. And so we were supposed to reschedule. And I just never rescheduled. I mean, we, we just never scheduled it. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be funny. Yeah. You know, the problem is when you do those types of like, they have a following and then 
you know, it, I, a lot of times I'll do those, those where I think, you know, they're funny or whatever, but for some reason they just don't, they don't typically do like that might, they may do great. Like, you know, the FBI agent, I just, I just talked to, um, Tom, uh, uh, Simmons or Sims. Yes. Simmons. I think it's Simmons, Tom Simmons. He's an investigator. He's 25 years with, with the FBI. He's got a huge following on Instagram. I did a video with him. I think he got 30 or 40,000 views, like a great video, right? Great. Um, I remember thinking it's pro I think it did well because he came here. Yeah. A lot of these guys that have these great Instagram, um, followings, you know, you'll do an, uh, I'll do a, something with them and they don't do anything. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a crossover issue, but the FBI agent, he did well. I think like a good criminal attorney would do well. Like I, I really, I just did one. I want to, I want to interview my own attorney at some oh. point. What, listen, I just did an, a, a, an interview with a guy who's been a criminal deter, defense attorney for like 30 years in Miami. Oh, yeah. He's, that'd be a good one. He was hilarious. I, I will genuinely be depressed if it doesn't do well because he was that good. It was three hours and he could have gone for another three hours. This is a guy, he's. I mean, he takes on a case. He goes to Mexico to investigate. He he took on a case one time for like, um, you know, human trafficking. It, and the guy was like, yeah, there's like there were like three prostitutes that the government was saying was under the age of 18. And he said they weren't. They're not. They're all over 18. So he goes to uh, to Vietnam to find them and bring them back to the United States. And this is he's like, this is a he names a town. He's like. There's no roads in this town. There's no street roads. Like they're dirt roads. There's no street names. He was, he was, the guy didn't have street names. He didn't have a brothel. He didn't have cell phones. He didn't have you know, nothing. And this guy spends three weeks there. I think it was almost a month before he actually found them and got them back to the United States. Damn. Yeah. It, listen, and that's just one story. He had one story after another after another. Oh, yeah. You know that they're going to have a bunch. I mean, I know my lawyer talked to me one time. He had to go... I think the Israel or, or I forget it was, it was some more way out of the country for one. Cause they had some people that, uh, they were charging with like suspected, uh, assistance to terrorism or what. I don't remember the exact charge, but they were trying to tie him to, to terrorism. And I mean, they, he just got, I, I'd love to interview him. I, I, I haven't asked him yet, but I'd love to like sit down and see if I can interview him like on his career, but then also like on my case and just kind of get his perspective of it. And I think that's what I want to do because at some point people will hear me tell my story. I want to start interviewing people that was involved with it. Right. You know, look well, that's at what, it and then save it and kind of do like a little mini docu series or something like that. Yeah. I was going to say you could one, you could cut it up and two, you could put it into a playlist. Yeah. You know? Um, and then, but really you could try and almost cut it up into like it, that could end up being like a three hour. Oh yeah. Podcast where you're telling your story. And then as you get to my lawyer and then you play bits and pieces of that interview. Yeah. Um, and, my, and then my investigators already told me that he would do it. One of the one that lives in New York, he come down and done all the forensics. Cause there was another huge case that was going on at the same time about a jeweler that, they were charging with his wife's murder. It was, it was a really interesting case. They found her hanging by a garden hose and a fence. And it's like the property is this real peculiar. You would have to see the property to kind of get what I'm talking about. But allegedly they went there. She was going to go through the gate to go into where their property was to use the bathroom. And the, the story is that somehow or another, she tripped, she fell, she got tangled up in the hose. And she basically hung herself. Um, and that they didn't charge the guy for almost a year. Now it started coming out that they had just left her previous husband's grave. She was drunk or had been drinking. She was also on drugs. So that was like kind of leading to her maybe falling and getting tangled up somewhere or another, and maybe not necessarily hanging, but passed out something along those lines. Maybe she fell where it restricted her airway. A year later, they come back and charge this guy. And the lawyer that he got was the lawyer that I had. And there's a scene. I'll try to see if I can find it and, and send it to you to where it was like one of the key things that, that helped them was he was like, if he strangled her somewhere else 
and then tried to proposition her back up on the fence to make it look like that. There was some hair like intertwined around one of the, the links in the fence. And they was like, you know, what if he'd have thought to do that? And he, he, in the courtroom, he takes this garden hose and puts it around his neck and pulls it and squeezes the shit out of his neck. I forgot the point of where he was going with it, but I mean, it was, it was really interesting. And that guy got a, uh, a hung jury. And so far the County hasn't refiled charges. They said they were, but as of right now, they haven't, cause that was going on while mine was going on, uh, but his was actually in trial. And the investigator was here for that. And so he said, it'll be a little bit cheaper if he can come out and do your stuff now, why he's already here. You don't have to pay his flight and hotels and all that. And so I had to come up with the money to get him to come out here and do all the forensics at my house. But I'd like it. He, he would, he would be a good interview too. Right. Oh, he's got to have a ton of stories. Oh yeah. He does. He was heavily involved with the Slager case where the officer shot the guy a lot of times in the back that happened here in Charleston. That's how he met Andy. Andy seen a seminar that he did. He contacted him. You know, he was in New York and was like, Hey, I need you down here for this case. And then ever since then, they've just steady worked together. Cause he's like, nobody down here does what you do to the level that you do it at. And so any forensics that he ever needs, he always calls that guy to, to come down here and do it. And it's fun like that. That's how that relationship started. And it's still there. And as long as Andy practices law, I'm sure he'll come back. Do you still talk to your, uh, I mean, on a regular basis, do you ever talk to him or just uh, every now and then? Yeah. Like, you know, holidays or whatever, throw him something. He's got a uh, season tickets to the Panthers. So I hit him up, uh, this year before the season started and he gave me, uh, four of his tickets to a preseason game. Yeah. I should trying to get some of that money back. Yeah. Just trying to get I'm some, I'm like, you know, I don't want to ask for the Thursday night game. I know those are a little pricey, but if you can throw a preseason or something my way. No, he, he's a good dude though. He's, he lives on the ritzier side of town, so I don't see him much, but, uh, over here okay. with the common folk. Yeah. He, he's a cool guy. And I, he's very charismatic. I don't know if you, I'll try to sign, find that thing and send it to you. And it's what I think a typical lawyer, like criminal defense attorney would be. He's very brash to the point he can, I can see we're in a courtroom. Like I never had to go to court. But I can see we're like in a full blown courtroom setting. He would just be amazing to watch. Right. Like you could, he's a might. And that's what everybody was saying. Like he's a maestro in the courtroom. The yeah, way it really things. It really is theater. Yeah. You know, it is. You're, it's a performance. That's why when they were trying to see if they wanted to uh, like kind of start moving on my case, they said, do you want to do anything through Skype or zoom? And he was like, no, that's not how I operate. I go in a courtroom. And so that's one of the reasons that my shit took so long, but I can see that he's, he's very much like a, a theater. He's in there doing his thing, but I mean, it's, it's come I, I thank God I didn't have to go through it through my own, but I was like, I would love to go and sit in on a court case and watch this guy do his thing. Yeah. I was going to say he, 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 it's like me saying, no, no, I'm, I'm better off flying out there and doing it in person. He yeah. knows he's better off. Uh, he's better in person. Oh yeah. Yeah. 100%. You can't cause his, his movements, his theatrics, the way he operates, you that some of the times that don't convey. On, yeah, you can't uh, get that in this little box right. here. You can't put the the whole charisma and everything. You can't, you can't do it. And he even, I mean, he even had to judge like kind of snark at him at my bond hearing. Like it was, it was pretty funny. I mean, uh, like I, now I, I can say that. Yeah. I, I told Wade. <laughs> the, uh, well, Wade, more, more Wade than you. She just came in. Um, all right. So, well, I hope to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! Listen, I can't wait. Keep in mind too your your thumb your face is going to be on that thumbnail too. I know my face was on another thumbnail you put up uh, not I, too long ago. That had to be me, you, and Joey. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could put Joey's face on a on a guy with like two guns or something oh boy okay all right <laughs> jess is not gonna be happy with you with this one no no we're done with that. she's like here she goes we're done with that after this one we are done this is it this is it <laughs> all right let me let me do let me wrap this up hold on let me all righty all right do you do you want to do one too so you 
yeah the, what is this the i always get confused is this intro or outro because we're doing i'm gonna it. do i'm gonna i just have to do an outro because we don't really do an intro anymore we just have the name come up i'm banking that people will go this far though i always do mine in the beginning <laughs> all right hold on one second let me do this hold on all right hey i appreciate you guys watching the video do me a favor if you liked it please subscribe is this i feel like that's that's better okay Hey, I really appreciate you guys watching the video. If you like the video, please subscribe. Please hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Also, check out Wade's channel. It is Crime and Entertainment. We're going to put the link in the description box. Uh, he specializes in uh, mob-related stuff, but he also has other stuff. So, And, and he's branching out, so I'm not, I'm not pigeonholing him into just the mob genre, but got a lot of cool stuff on his channel. Um, yeah, share the video, leave me a comment and, um, yeah, I feel like that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, please consider joining my Patreon. See ya.